Right everyone, another international break is very nearly over and Celtic will return in just five days. Count those fingers, that's the amount of sleeps until Celtic next take to the pitch away to Motherwell on Saturday. It's a big one. Today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the stories that have broken over the weekend that you may have missed. Uh, we're going to throw in a little bit of an international roundup, an article on Ange, a bit of what's to come on the channel this week. Think of it as a bit of a Celtic pick and mix. And who doesn't like pick and mix? I'm pink again today for some reason, not really sure why that's the case, but I can see it in my camera already that there's a, um, a pink tint to me. Uh, my lights are all working fine, it's sunny outside, so I don't know why that's the case. Maybe some legend camera operator can work it out for me. Hopefully it doesn't detract from the video, who knows, maybe it'll even add to it. We need to start by talking about Saturday. I am well aware this is a Celtic channel, mainly made up of people who support Celtic, want to talk about Celtic, but the Scotland game on Saturday was incredible. I was there at Hamden, the atmosphere was amazing. It genuinely is a game that will stick with me for a long, long time. The goals were brilliant, obviously the last goal especially. The celebrations after the game were incredible. And I think having missed this and the ability to be able to do that for so long, 18 months, it made it even more special. I think we're still waiting on that Celtic moment when it all clicks and the whole stadium's rocking and everyone's feeling the same thing. I don't think we've really had that yet. Perhaps after the Alkmaar game, certainly a couple of thousand had it at Pataudry, I would say, eight or nine days ago. But I still think we're waiting on the moment when a full Celtic park is absolutely rocking again after a big Celtic goal or full time and a big Celtic result. Maybe it's going to come over the next seven or eight games before the next international break. But when it does, it's going to be pretty amazing. I thought Callum McGregor was excellent on Saturday, second half especially. He's really becoming an important part of what is a pretty strong Scotland midfield. And Scotland look very much like they're in a good place to at least make it to the playoffs for the Qatar 2022 World Cup. But what about the other Celtic stars who have been playing international football? How are they getting on in their country's bids to make it to the World Cup? We're going to do this quickly because I know a lot of you don't really care too much about international football. Um, near Beaton, Lila Bada, spoiler, it's not going great for those guys. Albin Ayeti, he was an unused sub in Switzerland's 2-0 win over Northern Ireland the other day. Uh, Connor Hazard was actually nets for Northern Ireland in that game. Ayeti may get some game time, but probably not, as Switzerland travel to Lithuania tomorrow, while Northern Ireland are in the equally glamorous Bulgaria. Carol Starfelt didn't get any game time at all for Sweden in their 3-0 win over Kosovo. He certainly doesn't seem to be good enough in the manager Jan Anderson's eyes to be a starter right now. Tom Rogic, quite the opposite. He earned his 50th cap for Australia as they beat Oman 3-1. Now, that was actually Australia's 11th consecutive World Cup qualifying win, which I believe is a world record. Rogic played just over an hour of that game. He actually... Uh, basically set up the second Australia goal for them to go 2-1 up. He cut it back, uh, shot was saved, and eventually Hibbs's Martin Boyle stuck it in at the back post. So Australia are going good guns. They are on this amazing world-beaten, world-record run. And while the opposition aren't always great, they face over in Asia, they have done it without playing a single match on home soil since late 2019. So they're a pretty decent side. Next up for them, tomorrow lunchtime, Scottish time, I think 11.14 kickoff. Nobody's explained yet to me yet why that's the case, are Kyogo Furuhashi's Japan. And that's going to be a pretty tasty game. It's a huge one for Japan because they lost a couple of days ago to Saudi Arabia. Really not in a great place, Japan, at the moment. Kyogo came on as a second half sub around about the 60 minute mark for Liverpool's Takumi Minamino but he couldn't rescue anything there. Time will tell how that goes tomorrow. I'm certainly going to be tuning into that one. As I say, 11.14am kickoff Tuesday 
morning, I suppose, Scottish time. And someone explain that kickoff time to me, please. Someone else has got a bit of explaining to do. Stephen Kenny. He calls up Liam Scales to the Republic of Ireland squad and then Liam Scales doesn't even make the match day squad for their 3 0 away win to Azerbaijan. Now, how raging would you be travelling God knows how many thousand miles and back to and from Azerbaijan and not even making the match day squad? Maybe Scales will get some game time for Ireland as they play Qatar, that wonderful footballing nation, in a friendly tomorrow. We'll keep our eyes on that one. But for the probably only seven or eight of you who have stuck around this video and not yet switched it off in anger as I spoke at length about international football. We do have a little bit of Celtic news. So what has been happening in the world of Celtic over the last few days? Well, not a great deal. I did a bit of work two days last week on 67hailhail.com and let's just say there weren't too many options. I certainly have a lot of admiration for the work those guys on the website do during international breaks because it's not easy. They did at least have VAR to chat about on Friday. There was a meeting. Howard Webb, I think, kind of led it. His job was to basically sell VAR to the SPFL and the SFA and obviously the clubs that make up the Premiership, which is the only league that would have it at this stage. And the consensus seems to be that it was a generally positive meeting and the clubs are going to now take a vote at a later stage. So that's one certainly to watch. Neil Lennon has been bumping his gums once again. He's been deflecting yet more blame, despite the fact that we had an absolutely horrendous, horrible, any more adjectives to describe last season. I'm not going to get wired into Neil Lennon again because I quite simply don't have the energy and I don't know how he finds the energy. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. We do need to talk though about the big fight at the weekend, the huge blockbuster fight at the weekend. There wasn't another one, was there? I'm talking about Ramon Vega against Albion Ayeti. Now, it's worth pointing out, they didn't actually come to blows. This was just a, a verbal altercation and they weren't even in the same place. This was done via newspapers and online websites and stuff like that. Basically, Ramon Vega, who played, I think, about 14 minutes for Celtic about two decades ago, laid into Ayeti said he wasn't good enough to be called up for Switzerland, said he just wasn't good enough in general, that he doesn't have speed, that he doesn't have anything to his game, saying that he was only playing for Celtic lately because Ange had no other options. And that is obviously all fair comment from his point of view. But I loved Ayeti's response. He gave it the classic, who's Ramon Vega? Love that. I mean, you've got to love that from Ayeti. Chris Sutton then gets tore in. He questions why Ayeti doesn't show that same passion that he did in that answer when he's on the pitch for Celtic. He backed up his former teammate Vega and it was all kind of left at that. Not a great weekend for Ayeti apart from that answer, although I did notice that he won Ryan 118's Hunger Games yesterday. You really couldn't write that. Anyway, I read an interesting article on Ange and Celtic on Forbes website. Yeah, I'm going up in the world, lads. Um, it's a very good read. It was written by Mike Michal Wood, who's a journalist and Celtic fan based in Australia. He was chatting to Ben Darwin, who is a former international rugby player for the Wallabies. That's Australia, by the way. And he's now an expert on cohesion. Now, I thought it was a very interesting article. It was all about that moment when things will click for Ange's Celtic. Something I just keep talking about. I think I was on about it earlier in the video, about 10 minutes ago, chatting about when things will click and everything will just get amazing. And maybe that's a simplistic view to take on it, but that's the way I kind of look at life. Basically, Darwin spoke about how cohesion is all relative to the opposition you're facing and how, for example, the Scottish League wouldn't be a particularly strong league in terms of cohesion because of the amount of player turnover that takes place every single season. Obviously, as Celtic fans, we know that only too well from this summer. 
In comparison, a league like the Bundesliga would be a much better league in terms of cohesion because they've got entrenched youth systems, they've got recruitment models that outlast any individual managers and they've got business models that are bought into fully by supporters, sponsors, boardroom hierarchy. At this stage, I'm just saying business words. But Darwin's main point was that Ange's teams take some time to adjust to the way he wants them to play and he thinks that Celtic will have enormous, that's a quote, levels of success if they stick with Ange. So patience is the key word. He also said that the board need to understand what they want from Ange and when they want it to happen. And from the outside looking in, you've got to agree with that. I mean, Darwin's not going to know Celtic as much as I do and as much as other people watching this will, but it does seem like we've been very aimless for a long time. And as much as Ange has kind of united the club and the supporters and we feel as if we are finally going in a direction on the pitch, it still seems so aimless off the pitch. We do have some big players coming back after the international break. I don't think you can underestimate how big that's going to be for the club. Josip Juranovic, an international fullback, Chris Julian. The chat is that he and James Forrest will both be back in training after the international break. And that's huge as well. Now, they may both take a little bit of time to get up to speed, maybe two or three weeks, if not more, before they are in contention to actually play football in terms of matches. But getting those players back, Forrest, Julian, Juranovic, is going to be huge for Celtic. I just think that first game back at Motherwell, we need to find a way to win that. Again, it might not be pretty. It's going to be very difficult away to Motherwell. But after that, we've got a couple of home games in a row. I feel we can then build back into things. We'll have Kyogo McGregor back in the team. That'll make a huge difference. And yeah, I'm just waiting on this all working with Ange and everybody in Australia who knows him well seem pretty convinced that it will work. I would say I'm convinced too but I just don't want any more daft setbacks in the next few weeks. I just want Celtic to really kick on to a run now at this stage. We're certainly going to be kicking on to a jam-packed week of content on the channel. We have so much coming for you. We're going to have a big preview to that aforementioned Motherwell game. Later in the week, we're going to have former Motherwell and Celtic player Scott McDonald, kind of the perfect guest on I think on Wednesday we're also going to have the legend that is Vince Regari back on the channel he's the guy I spoke to basically before anyone else to do with Ange back in June or whatever month that was and we're going to do a bit of a catch up with Vince see how he's been viewing uh, what's happened with Ange so far I think we're maybe even looking at tomorrow evening for that one going out and we're also going to take a look at the Japanese market as well uh, five players that Celtic could look to sign in January. So much good stuff, so much variation coming on the channel over the next week and beyond, and it won't cost you a penny. That is the best thing about this whole YouTube malarkey. Don't know why I've used the word malarkey. It doesn't cost you anything. Just please sub to us, please.